Well, it's good to have you with us this Sunday morning, and we are privileged, privileged to be able to come your way by the way of uh, Facebook and YouTube, and we hope that uh, this short morning devotional will be a blessing to you on this Sunday morning. My name's Tommy Nichols. We pastor the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. We're located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. And if you don't have a home church to attend or you're looking for a church to attend, come and be with us in any and all of our services. Currently, our services are at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings, 6 o'clock p.m. on Sunday nights, and 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday nights. We are having um, inside church for 10 people and under. Uh, we are having parking lot church for those that want to come to church and uh, still be able to be isolated somewhat until this virus business is past us. And uh, they can sit out in the parking lot in their vehicles and uh, just listen from the comfort of their vehicles, from their car. And then we're doing this as well while all this is going on. Looking forward to our services, getting back to our regularly scheduled times. We normally have Sunday school on Sunday mornings at 10, but right now we're just having 11 o'clock Sunday morning, 6 o'clock Sunday night, 7 o'clock Wednesday night. Thank you so much for being with us today. We're trying to keep these to about 10 minutes total, so uh, you won't take a lot of your time, but you can still hear a message from the Word of God. Those of you that are not able to go to church, let me say this, and we'll be in the book of Romans chapter 12 today. Romans chapter 12. Uh, this will never replace uh, assembling with the brethren at the house of God, but we sure are thankful we can have this ministry and be a blessing to those that do go to the house of God, but also to those that are not able to go to the house of God at all. And uh, we're going to be in Romans 12, preaching out of that good old King James Bible. I said Romans 12. Let me back up. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Back up a few chapters there. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the privilege you've given us to be able to have this video and this time with folks. We, we never know who we'll reach, but God, I pray you'd speak to hearts. Those that's lost, that they'll be saved. Those of us that are saved, God, speak to our heart as well. We pray this video would be a blessing, and we'll thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Romans chapter number eight. Read now that good old authorized King James Bible. If you've got that Bible, you can read right along with us in the Word of God. Romans chapter eight, verse number 28. Very familiar verse, but I think it'd be well worth our time to be reminded of this this morning. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. There's a lot in that verse, and uh, I, I won't scratch the surface, but I sure do want to look at it for just a little while. We're going through some different days, as I said last Sunday on the video. We're, we're in some different times. I've, I've never seen it like this, but this is a verse that you and I need to remember all the time. The first three words Paul writes is this, and we know. Now, there's a lot of things we that are saved need to know. If you're listening today and you're not saved, you've never been born again, you need to know this. You must be born again if you ever want to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And there's no other way but the Lord Jesus Christ. So lost people need to know that. But we that are saved, there's some things that you and I need to know. He said in verse number 28 of Romans 8, and we know. So this is something that you and I need to know. If I know something, I'm, I'm pretty confident, right? I mean, if I know something's right, I can stand on that. I'm glad we can stand on this verse. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know what? That all things, notice those next three words, that all things, that means it could be good things. It could be even bad things that come into our lives. And we know that all things, what? Work together for good. They're working together together for good. But then it says this, to them that love God. This is a verse <clears throat> that only believers uh, can know. Only believers, only those that are saved. And we know, Paul's writing to the church at Rome. He says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So here's what I think we can think about that it doesn't matter what it is that I'm going through because the Bible says all things, what are all things doing? All things are working together. 
They're, they're working together. It does not say all things are good, does it? It does not say, and we know that all things are good to them that love God. That's contrary to what most televangelists will tell you. Oh, they'll tell you, you live for God, everything's just going to go perfect. Listen, the Bible does not say, and we know that all things are good to them that love God. But the Bible does say this, and we know that all things work together for good. Did you hear that? To them that love God. What's that mean? Well, <clears throat> let me give you a simple illustration that I've heard used many, many times over the years. I I'm not a baker. I'm not a baker. I like to eat things that are baked, but I'm not a baker. Um, I don't like to eat flour. <clears throat> do, you, do you like to eat flour? I'm not talking about flowers as in a plant. I'm talking about flour that you cook with. I don't like flour. I don't like pure sugar. Now, I know I, I, I've got a sweet tooth, and probably the most of us do, but I don't like just eat sugar with a spoon out of, out of you know, just pure sugar. Well, <clears throat> I personally don't like eating raw eggs, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't know that I've ever eaten a raw egg. I've never had a need to. I've never had a desire to. I know I've heard of people do that sometimes or doing that. I've never done it. I'm not crazy about flour. I'm not crazy about eating that by itself, baking soda by itself. I'm not I'm not uh, crazy about, I really don't care about eating sugar with a spoonful. Um, I don't care enough about eating a stick of margarine or a half a stick of margarine. But I tell you what, when you find somebody that knows what they're doing and, and you get to work in that stuff together, I mean, you get to work in it together just right. I'm not talking about if I bake a cake. I'm talking about somebody that knows what they're doing bakes a cake. None of those things are great in themselves or by themselves but boy, when they get all mixed up, and I mean it's mixed up right, and you put it in the oven and bake that, I'm going to be honest with you. Praise God, it's good, isn't it? It's good. I know that's a that's maybe not a great example or illustration, but I believe we can get the point. The thing is, the Bible says that we know. You need to know this. I, I know this. I'm not bragging on me. I'm just saying I know this. And we know that all things, no matter whether it's good bad in between. And we know that all things work together for what? It's working together for good. It may not seem good right now, what I'm going through or what you're going through. You may be going through a great tragedy, but God, even in a great tragedy, can bring us closer to him if we'll allow him to just work with us and help us. You know, troubles and trials can either bring us closer to God or they can drive us farther from God. We need to let troubles and trials draw us closer to God. And just think about the promises of God. You say, well, give me, give me one. This verse is one that I can cling to, that I can know. And we know that all things work together for good. For who? To them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. So when things don't go my way, and, uh, you know, it's not necessarily my way. It's not always the best way anyway. But when things don't go my way, I don't need to get mad at God. I need to remember this verse that when things are not so good, that it's working together for good. When things are, are great, sometimes things are great. Sometimes unexpected things happen. Let me give you an example of what we're going through right now with America being shut down. Churches having to do things so much different than what we're used to used to doing. But let me say something. It's working together for good. You know what the Bible says? You say, how's it working together for good? Because I'm going to be honest with you. The church has got complacent and, and, and just got used to just sitting on the pews. I'm talking about the majority of the church. Just complacent, sitting on the pews in a rut. But now we're having to think outside the box, aren't we? See, COVID-19 virus is not good. But it, all these things are working together for good. I tell you what it's going to do. It's going to do one of two things. People that love God and love going to church, it's going to make them love church that much more. Or those that really don't care much about going to church anyway, they're going to get used to staying out and they, they, they're just going to stay out. But I believe those of us that love God, it's going to bring us closer to him. Remember, Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Father, thank you for the opportunity to preach for just a little while on this Sunday morning. I pray it would be a blessing to each and every one listening. 
Deal with those that's lost that they'll call on you for it's too late. And as I said, deal with our hearts. And thank you for this verse that sure does help me. And we'll thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope this has been a blessing to you this morning.